How's it going everybody? This is Cameron White with White Light Astrology giving you guys your June 2019 horoscope for Sagittarius Sun and Rising. Thank you guys so much for being here and liking and sharing and commenting and subscribing. I love and appreciate every single one of you guys. Uh, we're starting June off with the new moon in Gemini happening on June 3rd and this is happening in your 7th house. A new moon, of course, is when you have both the luminaries, the sun, and the moon in the same sign as one another. This is giving you an opportunity to regroup, get more level-headed, set new intentions, and clear out the energy in that area or whatever house that rules in your chart. And with this being in the sign of Gemini, this is reestablishing communication, connection, seeing different ideas, and seeing how different things can work. Now, this is happening in your seventh house of relationships, of not only, you know, romantic, but professional, casual, formal, whatever you want to say, because the first house is who you, is the se first house is all about you, seventh house is about everybody else. And this new moon is going to be a really good time to kind of clear out that energy of like, you know, if there needs to be something addressed within relationships, or maybe, you know, it's a little bit overwhelming right now in any given context, this is going to be a good time to get better level headed with that. Now, as we move forward the next day on June 4th, that's when we're going to have Mercury enter Cancer. Now, Mercury is the planet of communication, our mindset, how we think, and how we vocalize our thoughts. And Mercury going into the sign of Cancer, Cancer being, you know, our emotions, uh, how we empathize with people, uh, what we need to protect, what we need to nurture. Uh, Mercury going into this sign is kind of like saying what needs to be said and being very conservative, also being very much empathetic and being able to relate and being able to be open with your communication and allowing yourself to be vulnerable. Now with Mercury entering Cancer, this is going into your eighth house. Ugh, it's my eighth house too, but the eighth house is all about death other people's money, what other people have that you don't see, uh, change, transformation. It's a very weird and uh, confusing house because it's an aversion to the ascendant. We don't always see what's going on there. It's other people's stuff. As Mercury goes into Cancer and goes into your eighth house, this is where the attention, you know, it may not be exactly on you because just like the whole world, not your chart isn't always about you. It has to do with other people too. However, Mercury going into Cancer is kind of, and going into your eighth house is focusing and addressing on the needs of what other people have. Like, you know, if you are in debt right now because the eighth house is also inheritances and taxes, this is going to be a time to focus on addressing those things. Mercury and Cancer is kind of like focusing on the more intense I ideas and the intense emotions around what the eighth house brings. Now, we'll be talking a lot about that as we move forward. However, moving forward a couple of days later, on June 8th, that's when we're going to have Venus enter Gemini, which is very exciting. Venus, the planet of love and value, money. She wants to bring you closer to the things that you love. She wants you to indulge in those things. She wants you to have great sex and yada, yada, yada. Venus is entering the sign of Gemini where she's looking for more mental stimulation, looking to learn something new, gain something new, socialize, talk, and express. And as she's going into your seventh house of relationships, I think this is going to be a positive time to reestablish or bring a lot more value in the context of relationships. If you're in a relationship right now, the seventh house is your partner, so this can be a very positive time for your partner. Uh, however, with that being said, it's going to be a more, better time for the relationship as well. Venus entering Gemini and going through Gemini is going to be very mentally stimulating and very much like, you know, who are the people that you have and where are they bringing value in your lives and or in your life and where are you bringing value to them? Venus and Gemini is kind of like, you know, you might just meet the right person at the right time with the right opportunity for something good. However, as we move forward on June 12th, this is when we're going to have Mars conjoin the North Node and oppose Saturn in Cancer. This is a pretty big deal. It's pretty rough. Mars, we, we talked a lot about this last month. Mars is in its fall. It's in Cancer. It has to focus on necessity and defending. It can't necessarily attack right now. But as Mars goes uh, on top of the North Node, North Node is very, like, it's Rahu. It's the dragon's head. It's what we're hungry for. It's what we're wanting to consume and the direction we're wanting to go in. And this is Cancer. This is, like, what our needs are. This is where we want to protect and nurture and, you know, actually feed ourselves. Mars conjoining the North Node is, again, like, going towards that area of, like, this is what I need regardless of how I get it. 
Now, Mars is opposing Saturn, where Saturn is, you know, retrograding Capricorn on top of Pluto, on top of the South Node. It's pretty rough. This is happening in your second house of finances. So right now where you could be struggling and could be looking at like, hey, where is your money? Where are your physical possessions? What's going on with those? Mars conjoining the North Node is like, hey, in order to take more power back from this powerless situation you can have with your finances or with your physical possessions, Mars conjoining the North Node is taking the action required and that is necessary to defend and protect what matters and what's important. Now, as we move forward a few days later on June 15th, this is when we're going to have Mercury conjoin the North Node. Now, this is, I've been saying this on my horoscope, so I think it's a great analogy, but this is kind of like shoot first, ask questions later. A little counterintuitive, but as Mercury goes on top of the North Node, this is when we're going to have a lot better image and a lot better visualization, a lot clearer idea of what that looks like, of what addressing our needs looks like, and what playing and what that being played out actually entails. While Mercury is going through your eighth house, and there's more mental activity, more mercurial uh, activity and energy going on with death, taxes, in, uh, other people's resources and money, you know, change, transformation, all of that stuff. This is where, you know, you kind of have to do what you got to do. And then after that, it'll make sense. Also on June 15th, we're having the full moon in Sagittarius. Yay. So we get to bank out with Venus and Gemini. However, while we have this full moon in Sagittarius, it's kind of like we just got done with Mars and Mercury conjoining the North Node. We focus on, you know, what needs to be addressed, what we need to focus on. This full moon in Sag happening in your first house is kind of like a look at, well, what's next? The new moon is lighting up, you know, one area of your chart. The full moon is lighting up a whole axis and a dynamic. It brings light to the dark and it shows us what we, what we don't always see. And as Jupiter's been through your first house and it's retrograde right now, we've been learning and we've been discovering more parts about ourselves that we've had to evaluate and learn what we believe. This full moon in Sagittarius is kind of like bringing on that emotion of like, now that we've had our needs addressed, where do we go from from here? And what does that mean for you personally, as far as your personality and your sense of self? What does that mean as far as what direction you're taking that in? Are you fulfilling that Jupiter and Sagittarius in your first house thing of like you're growing, you're evolving, and you're learning and discovering? This full moon in Sagittarius is kind of bringing up all the emotions around that, which is positive unless you just like hate feeling things. I love feeling things, even the bad stuff, but yeah, you get what I'm saying. Now, as we move forward on June 21st, this is when we're going to have the sun enter Cancer. And when the sun enters Cancer, this is when the main luminary, the light, the attention, the focus, the gravity, uh, the perspective is going to be more focused on the eighth house things of change of, you know, we're not really sure what's going to be next. The eighth house is a hidden house. It's dark. We don't see what's going on there. So there's like a light in the dark and it's kind of like, yeah, sure, you can see your immediate area, but maybe not too much farther out from you. And as the sun goes into Cancer, this is kind of continuing the story of Mercury and Mars there. And we'll talk a lot about that as we get into eclipse season next month. However, also on June 21st, we're going to have Mercury enter shadow. And this is really important for you guys because Mercury, I mean, you guys should know Mercury entering shadow. It's like that's where it'll station direct after it goes retrograde. And whatever happens on that day, you'll end up coming back to eventually in a couple weeks after that. So really pay attention to what's going on in that eighth house for you guys when it comes to other people's money, inheritances, you know, death and all of that kind of stuff. There's going to be a lot of mercurial focus on that area. Now, moving forward, though, to the end of June, on June 26th, we're going to have Mercury enter Leo where it will station retrograde. And I'll be talking a lot about that in my July horoscopes as well as I'm going to be doing a Mercury retrograde video in Leo about that. Now, as Mercury in Cancer is kind of like, you know, saying the things that we need to say, you know, being more uh, uh, open and vulnerable with our communication and empathizing, Mercury in Leo is kind of like saying what's on our hearts and saying it loudly and proudly and being expressive of that. Mercury going into Leo means it's going into your ninth house of spirituality, of philosophy, of far distance travel, foreign languages, higher education, publishing. There's a lot that kind of goes on in the ninth house, however. As Mercury goes in there and a lot of your attention, that mental energy gets focused on that area of, you know, higher education, growth, spirituality, far distance travel, foreign languages. You're going to see Mercury station retrograde right there where that's what we'll be talking about in July. But there's going to be this end of the month focus and wanting to go in that area, but we'll be readdressing that. And of course, I'll be talking about that later. 
Now that's what I kind of got for you guys for for June, but I've got to hit. I've got to say, like June's a pretty fucking rough month with this Mars opposed Saturn stuff, and I can't emphasize enough how much this month needs to be focused on addressing our needs and getting those needs met. There's going to be a lot going on in July that kind of pours in from what happened in June. August and September are great because we're going to be like doing what we want, but this month we got to focus on doing the things that we need to do. And with that being said. Thank you guys so much for being here and liking and sharing and commenting and subscribing. I love and appreciate every single one of you and I'll be seeing you next month.